Hello everybody, welcome to Sertua's Accounting Lessons PH and today's problem solving technique is bank reconciliation statement with a twist of a cash shortage. So we will actually be dealing with uh, some of the things that you already know in bank reconciliation statement but we will be having a little twist on what happens in a problem that says there's a possibility of a cash shortage. Before anything else, please download first the handout that is available in the description box. So once you click the link, you download the handout and then you can start listening to me. Okay, let's first start reading and analyzing the problem. And then uh, our way today is as I read the amounts and the details of it, we will be also analyzing them on the board. In running the October 2023 Bank Reconciliation Statement, you are attempting to determine an apparent cash shortage that you believe resulted from an employee's theft with the help of the cash custodian. The following information is available. So as we go on to the amounts, we will be analyzing them together with the details that is provided to you. Now, the question is, what is the amount of the suspected cash shortage? Since the problem asks you of the suspected cash shortage, expect that the ending or should I say the adjusted balances of your bank statement cash balance and your ledger cash balance will not be equal. And that's where you will get the amount of the suspected cash shortage. Okay, let's start. So with any other bank reconciliation problem, you do your adjusted balance method because that is the way uh, that you can answer this problem to make it more easier for you to, to, uh, to analyze it. So we put the bank statement related uh, stuff here and then the book uh, ledger balance in this side. Okay, then we do the adjusted balance method as you know it and that's how you actually normally do it in solving problems in bank reconciliation statement. So we start with your bank statement balance. And then I will put here your book or ledger balance. Okay, for the first bullet point, the ledger on October 1, 2023 shows a balance of 7,435,000. Well, you can put this actually directly here, but if you look at the date, it actually says October 1, 2023. So that's the starting point. So you have to adjust it on any cash receipts and disbursements that happen during the month in order for you to get the book balance at the end of the period, which is the end of the period of October 31, cash balance in the ledger. So I will put here, ledger. Cash balance for October 1, which is 7,435,000. The bank statement shows a balance of 7192000 on October 31, 2023. So that goes here, 7192000 Okay, next, cash receipts during the month is 2960000 So we'll add it here. So during the month is 2,960,000. And cash disbursement amount to 2,745,000. Before we continue with the analysis, let's get now the ledger balance as at October 31 or the end of October basically. So that is 7,435,000 plus 2,960,000. Minus 2,745,000 which gives us as ending balance 
as far as ledger is concerned of 7,650,000. We're just basically starting, <laughs> okay? Because this is your unadjusted bank statement balance and this is actually your unadjusted ledger balance. So this is just the starting point. <laughs> okay, next bullet point. A deposit of 1,250,000 that was placed in the bank's night depository on October 31 does not appear on the bank statement. That is what you call a deposit in transit. Okay? So, you add here your deposit in transit. So, for your deposit in transit, that is 1,250,000. Okay, let's continue. The bank statement shows that the bank collected note and credited the proceeds of 890000 to the entity's account. So that happens that uh, the bank statement will tell you that it actually collected something for you, which is actually called notes collected by the bank. Those notes collected by the bank should be adjusted in the book balance. Always remember that. So you put here notes collected by the bank. So add... The notes collected by the bank which is given there 890,000 checks outstanding is 400,000 so outstanding checks goes to the bank side so you have to deduct your outstanding checks amounting to 400,000. Okay, the next one is NSF checks or non-sufficient funds checks for 345,000. The company has received the check, but when they try in cashing it to, uh, for, basically in cashing it and getting the actual cash from it, it says that the source fund is actually not sufficient. So, that will be transformed as a receivable on the company side. So, uh, instead of putting it as cash, you have to put it as receivable. So, removing it from cash when you recorded it during the time of the receipt of the check, you have to transform it into a receivable. You have to deduct it here. So, you have to deduct it here less NSF checks. For $345,000. Next, bank service charges $18,000. So the bank statement tells you that they deducted $18,000 from your account due to bank service charges. The bank side, uh, sorry, the book side is not yet updated as to that. So you also have to deduct your bank service charges. Okay, and then for the last bullet point, the firm discovered that a check written in October for 200000 in payment of an account payable has been recorded in the books at only 20000 So if you analyze it very carefully, you should have paid 200000 for the payment of your account payable. It was only recorded as payment for only 20000 So what you deducted in your cash account is only... 20,000. So if you deducted that erroneously, you add that to to change just to go back to the original effect. Okay? So you add back the 20,000. 20,000 was erroneously deducted, but that's wrong. So you have to put it back first. 20,000 and then deduct the payment of your account payable which is the correct one for 200,000 or you can just actually simply deduct 180,000 but it's better if you analyze it this way so that you will reinstate the erroneous 20,000 
and then deducting the correct amount of payment of account payable. Okay, so we're done with uh, analyzing all of those bullet points. We can now try to see the amount of the adjusted balances for each of them. However, there is a suspected cash shortage due to an employee's theft with the help of the cash custodian. <laughs> okay, so let's get it here. This is your adjusted bank balance. So, 7,192,000 plus 1,250,000 minus 400,000. Your adjusted bank balance is 8,042,000. And then on the book side, okay, I, I have put quotation marks <laughs> adjusted because we don't know if that's the real one. So we start here. You don't have to start here, it's already done. So seven million. 650,000 and then you add your notes collected of 890,000 less NSF checks of 345,000 less service charges of 18,000 add back your 20,000 and deduct the correct amount of payment of account payable of 200,000 7,997,000 okay so as you can see the adjusted bank balance that we have here is not equal to the adjusted book balance that we have here. Let's try if we can see the suspected amount of cash shortage here. Okay, so. Bank balance after your bank reconciliation is 8,042,000. And let's try to compare or basically deduct it with the book balance after you have performed your bank reconciliation of 7,997,000. Okay? Now let's just try to deduct the smaller amount so just we get the difference. So this is your suspected cash shortage. Okay, so 8,042,000 minus 7,997,000, the answer is 45,000 and that is the amount of your suspected cash shortage and in your choices, that is letter C. And that's our bank reconciliation problem with suspected cash shortage for today. Thank you and have a great day.